today on Motors, Chris is going to show you how to install all the Amp Research products on our Chevy Silverado. Presented by Amp Research. Hey, welcome to Motors. Now you've probably seen us show you how to install Amp Research's products in a previous episode of Motors, but that was way back in season one, which is over 50 episodes ago. Now since then, they've continued their innovations with the introduction of the brand new Bed Step 2, as well as the Bed Extender HD. So we took this as an opportunity to show you guys how to install all their truck accessories on our 2009 Chevy Silverado. From the Power Step, the original Bed Step, the brand new Bed Step 2, as well as the Bed Extender HD. So let's fire up our Chevy, get in the shop, and get started. The new Bed Extender HD is the next generation bed extender. They went from a circular tube design to a rounded rectangular design for increased strength and rigidity. Now installation is the same, but assembly is a lot easier because the end tubes come pre-assembled, so all you've got to do is insert the center tubes and then tighten everything down with the center uprights, you're good to go. The tools you're going to need to install the Bed Extender HD are ones you probably already have. We've got a center punch, a Torx T25 driver, a 2164 drill bit, as well as a 1/8 drill bit. Of course, you're also going to need a drill. Everything else is pretty basic, and if you don't have it, you can head on down to your local Sears store, and the Blue Tool crew can hook you up. But what else we got over here, Olivia, for our installation? Well, I'm glad you asked, Chris. We're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, 13 millimeter wrench, a ratchet with an 8 millimeter and 13 millimeter sockets a 3mm hex wrench, a plastic pry tool, a torque wrench, some masking tape, and don't forget those safety glasses. Of course. Now, before we get started, we have to take a break, Olivia. What? I know, Already? I know. So we'll be right back after this break with more motors. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs at Auto Parts and Lawn and Garden Stores everywhere. Using some masking tape, mark each end of the center tubes seven inches in. We use this piece of cardboard as our template. Insert the center tubes into the end, starting with the middle tube, which is the one that has the AMP Research logo on it. Add on your center uprights. These just get sandwiched around the tube. They only go on one way because of the cutouts that are on the inside. You just want to loosely tighten these down for now, just in case you need to make some adjustments after we get on the truck. Now that our bed extender is fully assembled, we can install the universal bracket on the inside of the bed of our truck. The AMP Research makes this really easy by providing this handy template that just fits around the tailgate latch pin and provides the position for the top bolt. Now before we get to that, we actually have to remove our tail light. To do that, we just use a Phillips screwdriver to remove these two screws right here, and then a plastic pry tool to pop out the tail light. Use some tape to attach the template to the side of the bed of the truck. Then using a center punch and a hammer, mark where that top bolt hole is going to be. Now since we've got this spray on bed liner, we're also going to use a silver pen to mark where that hole should be. You go ahead and put your bolts into those holes you just drilled and put the nuts on the other side. I go ahead and tighten these down with a 13 millimeter socket and then using a torque wrench, torque them down to 22 foot pounds. Well, now with our brackets torqued down, we can reinstall our tail lights, bring our bed extender up in here and adjust everything and tighten it all up. Now, once you've got your bed extender HD fully assembled, you go ahead and tilt it at a 45 degree angle and slide it into your brackets to check for fitment. Looks like we've got a good fit here on our Chevy. Now, if it doesn't fit your vehicle, just slide your tubes in and out. And once you're all done, tighten them all down. The new design of the Bed Extender HD gives better visibility for your taillights for increased safety. 
To lock down the bed extender while you're driving around so it doesn't bounce around in your tailgate, just take the strap latch assembly and insert it into the tailgate latch on both sides. To release, just pull the tailgate handle. Installing the bed steps on a vehicle are really easy because they install using the vehicle's existing hardware, but you do have to put it together first. So on this rear mounted bed step, you take the bracket and the spacer and attach it to the articulating arm and then mount that on the vehicle. With that installed, you can finally put on the step pad and try it out. Now like the bed extender, the rear mounted bed step is also very easy to install, but if you don't have a 3 16th or an 8 millimeter hex wrench, you're going to need to pick those up. That's right, Chris. You're also going to need a torque wrench, a breaker bar, a ratchet, an 18 millimeter deep socket, a long extension, and your safety glasses. Well, thanks, Olivia. Let's show everybody how to assemble the bed step. Let's do it. Using an 8 millimeter hex driver and a ratchet, attach the bracket and the spacer to the articulating arm using the two long bolts. These two shorter ones are used for HD trucks. We're not going to use those. Now once these are snug down, torque them down to 33 foot pounds. Now that our assembly is complete, we can mount it on the driver's side of the truck using the existing hardware. Now located right behind the spring perch on the driver's side are these two 18 millimeter nuts. You're going to need an 18 millimeter deep socket and a breaker bar to loosen these guys up. Then remove both of those nuts using a ratchet. Install the assembly on these two studs, tightening it down with the factory hardware. After you've snugged these 18 millimeter nuts down, torque it down to 59 foot pounds. Now to install the step pad, go ahead and pull your arm down and then put these three provided tabs into these slots on the back into the first, second, and fourth slots. Go ahead and put it on the arm and then take these three 3 16 hex bolts and tighten it all the way down. And now for the most difficult step of our installation, removing the push sticker. The Power Steps comes with everything you need, including, of course, two of the steps, four LED step lights, two actuator motors, all the necessary nuts, bolts, and hardware that you need, a controller that you're going to install underneath the hood, two step arms, and two actuator arms, as well as this huge wiring harness that makes hooking everything up and installation a breeze. Now, the only product from AMP Research that involves wiring is the Power Step, which means you're going to need some additional tools. We've got our wire strippers, cutters and crimpers, some electrical tape, RTV, and a 9 32nd drill bit, as well as our drill. What else we got, Olivia? Well, we're going to need some plastic pry tools, a 13 millimeter wrench, a ratchet, an extension, 10 and 13 millimeter sockets, and a flat blade screwdriver. You're also going to need a 4 millimeter, 5 millimeter, and a 3 16th hex driver. Tape measure, gloves, my favorite, the safety glasses, and while AMP Research does provide some zip ties, you can never have too many. That's right, especially when you're working with electrical on the outside of the vehicle. Now, if the power step isn't cool enough, they now make these stainless steel strips that go along the front edge, which makes it look super cool. That's excellent. But before we get to the actual installation, let's take a closer look at what those stainless steel strips are all about. The stainless steel trim strips come as a set of two in either 79 or 85 inch lengths and work with the newer style extrusion steps. Now if you have the older style steps, AMP also makes a complete power strip trim kit which includes new steps along with the trim strips. Before you get started with the installation, you want to attach the motor to the actuator arm using the provided 4mm bolts. Just be sure that the motor is facing up. When you're done snugging them down, torque them down to 36 inch pounds. Well, now that we've attached this motor to the actuator arm, we can install both arms on the truck and then attach it to the vehicle at these points right here. Once we've got this step all mounted up, we'll get to that wiring. We're going to start by installing the driver's side front step arm. 
Remove the second plug from the front and then insert this threaded clip. Insert the 13 millimeter fastener into the clip and then hang the step arm from it. Install this threaded clamping plate right here on the top of the pinch weld and then thread this five millimeter fastener to the bottom. Tighten it all the way down and then torque it to 16 foot pounds. You wanna leave that top bolt loose for right now. Now repeat the same process for the rear arm, which on our Chevy 1500 extended cab is the fourth sheet metal hole from the front, which is about 11 inches from the rear of the cab. On the bottom of each step are these T-nuts. You want to slide them into position so that they line up with your step arms. Then use the provided hardware and torque them down to 10 foot-pounds. Once you've got this mounted, you want to torque this top nut on the back side of the step arm down to 16 foot-pounds. Align your step with the rear of the back door. And then finally, tighten everything down. Well, now we can get on to the electrical. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach this controller to this support arm located just to the right of the battery using the provided 11-inch zip ties. Then we're going to remove our fuse from our wiring harness and then attach our red lead to the positive side of our battery and the black lead to the negative side. The wiring harness has two branches, a shorter one for the passenger side and a longer one for the driver's side. Now both of them need to be routed along the fender well, down the frame to the motor for each step. The one difference is that the one for the driver's side has to be routed along the firewall. Just make sure that as you go along, you zip tie everything down tightly. Well, now we've got the driver's side power step all installed. There's one more thing to do, which is to wire up our LED step lights. Now, the first one's going to be mounted right underneath here, about 22 inches in from the front of the door, and the second one, about 65 inches. You're going to need a tape measure, some wire strippers, crimpers, some rubbing alcohol, and a supplied butt connectors to connect it up to the wiring harness. And once you're all done with this side, do it all over again on the other side. Remove your door trim pieces with a plastic pry tool so that you can lift up your carpet. Under the driver's side carpet is a rubber grommet with an existing cable. Use a Phillips screwdriver to poke a new hole and then fish your wiring on through. Repeat the same process on the passenger side, but there is plastic so you'll need to drill a hole, fish your wiring through, then use some RTV to seal it and put some tape on top to keep it from getting messy. The AMP Research wiring needs to be connected to some OEM wiring that are in both the passenger and driver side doors. Now they also provide this plastic tubing which makes fishing the wire through a lot easier. To quickly and securely connect the wires, use the provided posi taps. Connect the LED lights using the butt connectors and a crimping tool. Use some rubbing alcohol to clean the areas where you're going to put your lights on, peel the backs off and stick them on. That's pretty much it. All you've got to do now is put the fuse back in and test everything out. Now earlier we showed you how to install the bed step from Map Research, which mounts on the rear bumper. Now they recently introduced the brand new bed step 2, which mounts on either side of your truck, just behind the cab for quick access to your toolbox or the front of the bed of your truck. Now, as with all Amp Research products, they provide instructions that are easy to follow and they give you all the hardware that you need to do the job. The installation of the bed step on the rear of the vehicle is a pretty simple installation requiring just a few tools. Now for the bed step 2, which mounts on either side of the vehicle, we need a few more tools mainly because we need to drill a hole in the frame. Now because of the limited space available, you need a right angle drill like the C3 from Craftsman as well as a quarter inch and a 17 32 inch drill bit. But we need a few more things, don't we Olivia? That's right Chris, we're going to need 13, 15 and 18 millimeter sockets, a Torx T25 driver, various ratchets and extensions a center punch, and a 19 millimeter wrench. You're also gonna need a Sharpie, a breaker bar, a torque wrench, gloves, and no project is safe without those safety glasses. That's right, thanks Olivia. Now we'll be right back after this break with more motors. Ah! 
Hi, I'm Nate with Sears Tools. Let me tell you about the Blue Tool Crew. We know tools. With over 400 national brands and over 30,000 products, we can help you find the tools you need. Shop with us at your local store, online at sears.com tools, or with the latest Sears Tools catalog. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. And if you have any questions, give us a call at 877-4-BLUE-CREW. To assemble the bed step two, we need to sandwich the bracket between the linkage assembly and this lateral mount. Now we're installing this on the passenger side, but if we were installing it on the driver's side, we would not only reverse the orientation of the lateral mount, but we'd also flip this bracket around. Then loosely secure using the two 15 millimeter bolts. Attach the frame mount to the lateral mount using the skirted 13 millimeter bolts and torque them down to 16 foot pounds. And up here at the top of the frame mount, you want to use the regular 13 millimeter bolts and then loosely thread the nuts on the inside. Use an 18 millimeter socket and a breaker bar to remove the bed mount bolt. Now on the driver's side, you're also going to need to remove the ground bolt and place three washers in place. That's going to give it some additional space for the frame mount. Use the last skirted 13 millimeter bolt to attach the bracket to the bed mount. Then check your linkage assembly to make sure that it's not hitting your body and then tighten down those 15 millimeter bolts. Then at the top of the frame bracket, tighten the 13 millimeter bolts so that they're snug against the bed mount. Go ahead and install the step pad towards the rear tire and then tighten it down to five foot pounds using a Torx T25 bit. Then adjust the step pad to be in line with the fender. Parts is brought to you by the Sears Blue Tool Crew. Craftsman makes a ton of different drill drivers, both corded as well as cordless. Now depending on what you need to do, you just grab one and you're off and running. However, every now and then you encounter a tight space where it just won't fit, just like we did earlier in this episode when we had to drill a hole in the frame of our Chevy truck. Now the perfect choice for us was this low-cost Craftsman 19.2 volt C3 cordless 3 8 inch right angle drill driver. It packs a ton of power letting you drill long enough to complete the job, has a very comfortable ergonomic grip, is variable speed, reversible, and even includes a spot on the drill itself to store the two included bits. Plus, just like many of Craftsman's other drill drivers, you get an LED light to help you find your way. Now we had absolutely no trouble using this drill driver to carve a big old hole in the steel frame of our Chevy truck. It comes with Craftsman's awesome lifetime warranty, and it kind of looks like a meerkat. Now for more information, check it out on our parts page at our website, head on over to Sears.com or check it out at your local Sears store. Headman Headers has been around since 1954 and is well known for their extensive line of performance products. So when it came time to rebuild our Chevy small block, we turned to Headman to help us turn our junkyard into a well-oiled machine that also looks great. Now Headman Headers is part of the Headman Performance Group, which also owns Transdap Performance Products. Well, that just happens to be the manufacturer of this work of art. This is their chrome oil pan for Chevy engines from 1955 to 1979. It has a much larger oil capacity, seven quarts in fact, than stock oil pans to keep your engine running cooler, yet it's only eight and a quarter inches deep to provide maximum ground clearance. <laughs> this thing's just gonna look awesome in our V8. 
Now watch us install it in an upcoming episode of Motors. To learn more about this oil pan, which is made right here in the USA and is perfect for the strip or the street, just visit the parts page at our website. Letters, brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Now how would you like to have your vehicle featured on our show and our website? All you've got to do is send in some photos or a video. Now to be considered, check out our website right here for more information. Plus every month we give away a free Motors branded cover from Covercraft. Now let's get on to our first letter. This one's from Jeff Schwerer. He says, I love your show. I've never heard of Motors until accidentally running across it while doing a search on YouTube. Rest assured you have a new TV show fan. FYI, I especially like the way you present your how-tos. It's almost like seeing it done in real time. Too many other auto shows on TV reduce the time taken to do a major task to a 60 second. During a commercial break, Bob and I installed the engine format. Sincerely, Jeff Schwer. Well, Jeff, that's exactly why we started Motors, is because we wanted to show every single step of the way, even the really hard stuff that they do during those commercial breaks. And now Ahmed Wright says, Hey Chris, thank you for all the wonderful and extremely useful videos about Mustang upgrades. I would like you to tell me if it's possible to paint the fabric seats. What good spray would do? Well, I don't recommend that you paint your fabric seats. That color is going to fade, it's going to crack, it's just not going to look good over time. Of course, you can take the plastic pieces off that are around it and paint those. But what I do recommend is you take it to a local automotive upholstery shop and maybe have them do something for you or get some new slip-on seat covers from Covercraft or one of Catskin's leather kits. And finally, Shane Walker writes and says, Hey Chris, love the show and everything about it, especially the fact that you mainly use hand tools so the average do-it-yourselfer can work on their own vehicle. I know on Season 3, Episode 10, you did a segment on spark plugs, but I was wondering if you guys are going to do an episode on removing broken spark plugs. Thanks again for the great show. Well, thank you, Shane, for the great letter. We actually get this question all the time. Now, what you're referring to are these longer-style spark plugs that Ford likes to put in their 5.4 and their 4.6-liter engines. We've got them in our F-150 as well as our Mustang project vehicles. Now, over time, if you leave these in too long, they will snap in half, and then you've got just this bottom portion left in your engine. It's kind of hard to remove. But there is a tool that helps you remove what's left inside your engine. And there's also another tool that helps you safely remove the entire plug without risk of breakage to begin with. Now we'll show you how to use both of those tools in an upcoming episode of Motors, so keep on watching. Now thanks Shane, everybody else for sending in your letters. You guys get free E3 spark plugs for your ride. Now to find out if they're available for your vehicle or to learn more about their diamond fire technology, just head on over to e3sparkplugs.com. Well, there you have it. All of AMP Research's products are installed on our Chevy Silverado, all using basic hand tools from the Sears Blue Tool crew. Now, for more information on AMP Research's complete line of products, head on over to amp-research.com or check out the parts page at our website. We'll catch you next week on Motors. Ooh, get excited. In a world where every vehicle has a bed extender HD, Move that thing out of the shot. There you go. Drop your wrist. Now move back, Chris. I'm gonna turn off the camera and go home in a second. <laughs> she's just got to, whenever, whenever I'm done, she's gotta do that. Which means you're gonna need some additional tools. We've got the, 